Welcome to Mamas in Training, a podcast that gives new moms guidance and community from moms who have been there. I'm Jessica Lorian, a mama in training myself, so let's learn together all about this thing called motherhood. I originally created Single Moms Planet out of my own survival. I needed to figure out a way to not only get my life back on track, but on a totally different type of track. Now I was newly divorced, um, co-parenting, trying to figure that out, and wanting to also dive back into what was I going to do with my life moving forward? What businesses was I going to create? How was I going to make sure that I had, you know, enough money to not only pay my mortgage and take care of my kids, but also not just be in survival mode. I wanted to be in thrive mode. I wanted to get into legacy conversations so that I'm making an impact on my children's children's children. And I knew that I could not do that in my own bubble. I'm not quite sure you are ready for the inspiration bomb that is about to drop. I know I wasn't. Whether or not you're a single mom, I can guarantee that this episode is going to fill your heart, lift you up, and give you the confidence you need to create your legacy. On the show today is Nefertiri Plessy. She is the founder and CEO of Single Moms Planet, as well as Elevated Strategist, a coach, motivational speaker, she's been seen everywhere, and most importantly, she is a single mom of two boys. That is all I will say to introduce her because I just need to cut to the chase. You need to hear her speak. So without further ado, here is Nefertiri. I have two boys. I have a 14-year-old and I also have an 11-year-old. Two totally different personalities. I bet. And the thing that I love is that you say you are on a mission to change the face of single motherhood. How did you feel in that moment when you first became a single mom? Before you get divorced, first you have that separation phase, typically. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified. I mean, that probably would be the (laughs) terrified, embarrassed, um, confused, not sure what was going to be coming next. And also at the same time in survival mode, Um, just wanting to make sure that my kids were going to be okay, that I was going to be okay. I had mental blocks all over the place, emotional uh, we we decided to split when I actually was pregnant with my second son. I was pregnant and um, we were starting to go through uh, the phase of not being together and not living together. The emotions or how I was feeling, it was so layered that I wouldn't wish it on anyone. It is a very interesting place to be in. And I mean, a lot of the reason as to why I started my organization, Single Moms Planet, was because of what I experienced, Um, you know, as a as a young woman going through a separation and divorce and doing that all while having young kids. It it is it's it's almost indescribable in a way. And we're going to touch a little bit later on how that's evolved now to the beautiful co-parenting relationship that you've created. But I I just want any moms who are out there who might be single moms, newly single moms, or even just in the brunt of that beginning phase and not knowing quite what to do, I want them to know that you've been there and you've come out in a positive way at the end of of what seemed like to be a dark tunnel. I'm just so grateful that you're here to share your story and share some enlightenment for those women. And I also wanted to mention that you grew up with a single mom, which I think I actually grew up, my mom was single for 10 years, so it was just the Mm -hmm. two of us for 10 years. So we had that a little bit, but I know now it seems like you still have such a strong connection to your mom through and into adulthood. What have you learned from her about motherhood and being a single mom? I learned so much from my mom. Um, I still learn from my mom, probably on a daily basis. Uh, (laughs) We have a really really close and uh, tight relationship my mom definitely raised me by herself. Um, her, her and my father split when I was a baby. Um, they were in a domestic violence style 
situation and she didn't feel it was safe for herself and probably also not safe for me as well. She worked full time. She actually put herself through school when I was a child. She put me in preschool. She just always had a a spirit of always wanting to be educated. My mom loves taking classes still. She loves the body. And so as well as becoming a dental assistant, she also would teach aerobics. And so she was a personal trainer and did aerobics for over 15, 16 years. And so she's in great shape. Um, Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I learned from my mom is self-care. And I don't do enough of it. Uh, She recently took three days off of work and went to Palm Springs and just was like, I'm taking off. I I need to take a beat for myself. And she is a self-care queen. You know, she gets (laughs) massages. She'll massage her own body. Um, And so I think that as women... A lot of times we do put that self-care on the back burner and it will show. It shows up at the end of the day somewhere, somehow um, within our body or within, uh, you know, how we age. Um, You know, aging gracefully is not something that we are all necessarily going to get handed. And so taking care of ourselves when you're young, taking care of yourselves even when you're pregnant Um, prior to pregnancy as well is so important. And so give yourself a beat, you know, give yourself that moment to just demand the self-care. I think that is what my mom has definitely taught me the most. Yeah. And I can understand how you might have struggled a little bit to (laughs) encourage (laughs) self-care for yourself because my goodness, your rap sheet. So This beautiful mama is not only the founder and CEO of Elevated Strategist, which is an agency for mom entrepreneurs, business owners, and leaders to build strategies and grow, but she's also a coach, a motivational speaker. She's been featured in the Huffington Post, BBC, MSN Lifestyle. It goes on and on. The most important thing that we're going to touch on today is that you're also the founder and CEO of Single Moms Planet, which is a national nonprofit organization. We're going to touch on that in just a second because it's so, so important what you're doing for single moms all over the planet (laughs) is just absolutely beautiful. But first, I want to just mention that we're not just talking about single moms. Of course, your experience is with divorce, but we're not just talking about single moms in the experience of divorce because there can be many single moms out there who might be listening to this. And this is something that I love that you've said This was part of your inspiration to building Single Moms Planet. You say, there are so many ways that women become single mothers. And this work that you've done, you say, it has let me see that there was a need for women to share their stories. What, through learning, through all of these women that you've helped, what stories have influenced you the most? You know, it's so, it's interesting because as I even listen to you speaking about the organization and some of the work that we've done in the community through Single Moms Planet, I've evolved with the organization. And so I do believe that the women that come through the organization and who we attract evolve with me, Mm. right? And so just recently, there is a mom that I've known for many years actually, And she's actually married, but her husband, and I've known both of them for years, he was deployed while she was at her, the end of her pregnancy and he could not be there. And I just can, you know, so she's been raising the baby. He won't be there for the first year of the baby's life. Yeah. In a physical form. Right. And so she has a, a single mom connection she has him there, but he's not physically there. Right. Right. And so he's experiencing the baby through photos and videos and, you know, phone calls, you know, things of that nature. Right. But to really, you know, I, I sat back and I said, wow, you know, um, for this, for this mom to just have, you have the husband, but he's just not even physically there. I mean, it just would bring tears to my eyes to, and this was their first child. They never had any children prior to this. And so, you know, I would really have to say that that is one of the most recent 
um, touch points for me, you know, even just to be going through her pregnancy with the coronavirus happening and, yes. you know, just the, the, the fear around that she couldn't have anyone except for one person in the hospital with her. Her mother came and was with her, but she couldn't have like visitors or friends or anyone really kind of fill those gaps that we normally get to have um, when we have a newborn. Right. And so those are some of the that's an example of a story that's recently touched me. But I mean, there's been thousands. And, you know, when we first started the organization, there was a young mom. Um, we got a phone call in the middle of the night and it was from a woman who had taken her in from uh, a church and she was pregnant. She was in the hospital giving birth and she was homeless mm-hmm. and she had nowhere to go. And they were not going to release the, the child to her because she was homeless. Right. So you can't leave the hospital with a baby. You have nowhere to live. Um, They're not going to put the child in danger. And so I can remember that this it's almost like you're just you're just so vulnerable. Right. It's just like I just gave birth. I have nowhere to go. And, you know, the, the woman who actually took her in, I mean, she was a single mother. She had a young son. I think he was about three and she was able to help her get on her feet. And so. This is all, you know, really a community organization. I do not do it alone. We have a lot of advocates um, that support the organization and step in 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 ways or that maybe I cannot. Um, and just even being able to give, you know, baby showers to moms that don't have the supplies or, you know, even that same mom, we helped her get a mattress because she was sleeping on the floor. Mm-hmm. When she finally did get an apartment, she was sleeping on the floor, the one that was homeless, with her kids. She had a three-year-old son. She had a newborn baby. And one of our moms who used to be a single mom, she raised her kids and then she got remarried um, once they became adults. And she was able to have a mattress delivered to her. Oh, and so, that's beautiful. you know, it, it, it is, it's the stories as I'm listening to myself even speak about them. They don't just settle with me. They mm-hmm. are intertwined into community. Yeah. Um, and so it's so important that the number one thing that we want to create as women around us are powerful, strong communities, you know, communities of people that support you, that you support um, when you can lend that extra 15 minutes to someone, you know, do it. And at the same time, make sure you take care of yourself as well. What you've created, like you just spoke about in that story it has truly become a community because someone who got the help and received the help from you all has now been able to come full circle and turn around and give that help to somebody else. I mean, if that's not the perfect example of a successful organization and and full circle community, I don't know what it is. It's just stunning to hear. For women who might be single during their pregnancy or find themselves single as a mom early in their motherhood journey, What would you say to help support and encourage them? If you're a single mom and just no support, right, you're pregnant, I I really just urge you to make sure you get your doctor visits. I think that's one of the things that does usually kind of fall to the wayside. It it is getting, I go back to that self-care again, because now we're talking about self-care and baby care. Making sure you're eating properly is key. Um, also monitoring what you're eating is going to be really important. You don't want to end up causing yourself issues because you're not eating the proper foods, like reading about the body and how to make sure you keep the elasticity in the body and in the stomach area and, you know, taking those walks, staying active is going to be really important. And even in the coronavirus, if you need to walk around your house for 15 minutes a day. And just say, I'm going to get my heart beat up, you know, as long as the doctor says it's okay to do, of course. But we want to just make sure that we stay active. And if there are any women that are in your community that are pregnant already or that recently had a baby or they're kind of like the OG mamas, like they've had kids, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, lean on them and, you know, don't go at it alone. Don't watch sad movies, you know, things (laughs) like that. Don't, Don't don't do anything that's going to alter the joy that you can control, right? So we want to make sure that anyone that's negative in our lives, just you just don't have space for them, especially when you're pregnant. You want to be responsible for that connection that you do have with the baby. 
If things are making you overly emotional, just eliminate them for right now. Do, if you need to deal with them later, just if you can, just table it. We don't have mm-hmm. to deal with everything. And if you want, if you can, be really would be great to get counseling. Even if you don't think you need it, it's just good to talk to someone. Mm-hmm. I, I went through counseling when I was pregnant because I was crying every day. I was crying every day. I was like, this is ridiculous. This is not, <laughs> this is not a good look, <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay, well, let me, let me get counseling or something. And I was just able to just have that weekly connection with someone that was very neutral. And that just was almost like that ear to listen to, but it wasn't like a part of my family or it wasn't a part of my friendship circle. Right. So I could be a little bit more vulnerable and maybe put things on the table that I may not say to someone that I know. Um, and if you have something going on, like you're a single mom and you're, you're pregnant and you have something going on with the father or the family members or anything like that, you don't have to share your business with everyone, right? A, a lot of times you never know. You, you may end up, if there's a situation where, you're, where there is a man involved, you could end up back with that person. Yeah. And you've just like spilled the beans about everything that was going on in your relationship. And now he's at the family picnic or the barbecue and everyone hates him. <laughs> and you're trying to say, oh, no, that was just we were going through. So I was emotional. You're trying to explain him back into grace. Mm-hmm. It's just an unnecessary uh, thought process and mechanism that you're going to have to deal with. And so get that neutral ear of someone that maybe is not in your internal circle and or also have that counseling if you just feel like you need to talk. The only thing about talking, and I will say this, the more we talk about what we don't want, the more of what we don't want shows up. So be very cautious <laughs> about how you use your, your speaking because it does cause creation, right? So we, we create with the sound of our voice, right? So our thought, and then we project out. And so if you don't want something to be the way that it is, be very cautious about continuously repeating it, hanging up the phone and calling, calling your sister, hanging up the phone and calling your best friend, hanging up the phone and then calling one of his relatives to complain about him. Right. So if that is your situation, I just say protect um, the dynamic of the fact that if you have a child with this person and it's a, it's a, it's a guy that's there still protect the relationship as much as you can, because you just never know how things are going to unfold, what the co-parenting relationship will look like, and just pray. You know, I'm a praying woman. Um, I have a great relationship with God. And so tap into that essence as much as you can as as well, if that's a part of your structure and a part of your dynamic. Um, And protect your heart, protect your thoughts. You know, I think that probably would wrap up everything I just said, you know, protect your heart, protect your thoughts and protect your future. Because what you say about your family and the dynamic can always bleed back to the child, right? So people know information and then eventually those same conversations get told to cousins, they get told to other family members, and then that child's going to receive that data. We'll be right back. This episode of Mamas in Training is supported by Nussel, Mama's Milk Wrap, a full-coverage, hands-free pumping and breastfeeding aid. With its soft fabric, the Nussel wraps around your torso, providing moist heat therapy to encourage letdown of your breast milk. While doctors usually recommend hot showers to encourage milk production, the Nussel allows you to have complete coverage, stay dry, and fold your laundry at the same time. When you're ready to start the dry up process, simply pop it in the freezer for 30 minutes and lay it across your chest. The cold compression of the nussel signals the brain that the breasts are full and slows production. One nussel mama says that her dry up time has gone from one year to less than one month. Heat and cold therapy of the Nussel lasts 20 to 30 minutes and can be used on other parts of your body for pelvic pain or back pain. One client even said that her teenage daughter uses it for her period cramps. The Nussel is perfect for the entire household. It's also an ideal baby shower gift. It can be used right away as a pregnancy belly support and a postpartum belly compression. Nussel is with you throughout your entire motherhood journey and beyond. 
If that wasn't enough, the Nussle also comes with a free lactation consultation with one of their team experts. Nussle Mama's Milk Wrap is a product and a service for only $59.95. And just for listeners of this podcast, they are offering 15% off. So go to mamasmilkwrap.com and enter the promo code Mamas in Training to grab your Nussle and 15% off. Now back to the show. One thing that I read that you talk about with respect to how you get things done, whether it's a, your business or just for your life as a single mom, you say, enroll people into your life and into your vision. That is a beautiful statement. You say calling on people that specifically will check in to remind you to eat or to remind you to, you know, do those basic elements. So what are some other steps that women can take who might find themselves overburdened in this single mom or just freshly pregnant or freshly new mom world and environment? I'm a firm believer in falling all the way in. So I'm not a believer in balance. I think that when we try to balance, we don't really get anything done for real. It's almost like I got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's almost like baking a chicken halfway, right? (laughs) It's not really cooked and you really can't eat it, Mm -hmm. right? You're still hungry. Mm -hmm. Nothing's solved or resolved. And so just choose something. When you are creating more space on your plate, same size plate, right? You're just adding more to it. You have to really get into this concept and this mindset of I'm going to fall all the way in to what's on the table right now and I'm choosing it. And when you make the choice, you stand on the choice that you've made. And this is really important. When we stay in the gray area, nothing really happens and we don't take a stand for anything, right? No one remembers the ones that are in the gray area. We don't even know their names. They don't exist, right? And so when we also create a life in the gray zone, the things that we wanted to manifest or the things that we want to actually create, they don't show up because they don't know how to live in the gray. They don't exist there. And so things that we want, they exist in choice. And then when you make that choice and you fall all the way into it, you take action. And that action is going to be divinely centered on the result that you want to create in that moment. I also choose to not do anything, right? So there's choices that I do on a daily basis where I'm like, I'm done for the day. That's mm-hmm. my choice. And I'm falling all the way into that. I'm like, where's my ice cream, my hagen dash? Don't come to my room. <laughs> I'm turning on my TV. I'm like, I need to zone out for a <laughs> yeah. second, right? So that's also a divine choice. And when I can choose that, there's no guilt there. There's no shame, I'm not saying, oh, man, I needed to bond with my kids. I'm like, I am not bonding with my kids. It is on purpose and I'm loving it. You guys Mm -hmm. need to go figure something out for the moment, right? Um, And so that's going to be really, really important. That's what I would say for now. So living life outside of the gray is falling completely into the choices that you're making and taking action 100% no matter what that is. Is that how I understand you correctly? Exactly. Mm. Wow, that's just that's just amazing. I want to touch back on Single Moms Planet. Why did you create this organization? This is a membership-based organization that helps 10,000 families a year. And you're uplifting, inspiring, and celebrating mothers. You're offering them events. I'm sure some of that's even looking a little different this day and age, but you're still you're offering different events financial literacy, business guidance, affordable health care, job search. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Why did you create this? I originally created Single Moms Planet out of my own survival. I needed to figure out a way to not only get my life back on track, but on a totally different type of track. I mean, now I was newly divorced, um, co-parenting, trying to figure that out. And wanting to also dive back into what was I going to do with my life moving forward? What businesses was I going to create? Um, How was I going to make sure that I had, you know, enough money to not only 
pay my mortgage and take care of my kids, but also not just be in survival mode. I wanted to be in thrive mode. I wanted to get into legacy conversations Mm -hmm. so that I'm making an impact on my children's children's children. And I knew that I could not do that in my own bubble. I love that idea of legacy. And I feel like that scares people to think about that. Or I feel like it, it, especially moms who might be so overwhelmed, they can't even think about whether they're going to make it through the night. You know what I mean? It's like, how can I think about legacy when, you know, I just can't even get two hours of sleep, but there's power in that, right? And how can we as, as women, whether we're in that pregnancy phase or single mom phase or newly mom phase, whatever phase we're in, how can we truly embrace that idea of legacy? We all need to. Definitely. So I love the legacy conversation. So the number one thing is you have to stop living the life called I am the parent and everything that's going on in the household is for parents, adult business. Children can't take over something when they're not privy to what that something is. So if you're building something, you're creating something, the children need to know what's happening. I don't care if they're two, right? They need to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So even getting them their own savings account, even if it's $5 in that thing, right? Have them open that up. Some type of investment account. Having them talk to their own financial advisor, they can do this once a year. Have a, I don't care if they're five years old. They could be five years old and have a conversation about what are they invested in inside it. They, it could have a hundred bucks in that thing, right? But there's conversation. It's a conversational reconstruct, right? So even having that conversation, making sure they understand what is legacy and that you understand it. What type of legacy do you want to build? which is going to be really important, but it is about that financial education. So sometimes we have this idea that, you know, maybe the man is the person that's supposed to handle the finances. Well, what we've discovered is that women are actually better most of the time at managing the finances of the household. It's, it's, it's upsetting because I've had so many conversations with women that say they woke up one day and their cars being towed away, their house is in mm-hmm. foreclosure And they're losing everything because the husband did not communicate this. He's just saying, I got it. We have to have money conversations with our children in order for them to know how to have money conversations with their spouses, right? And then getting that family unit to really start to see that they are also a legacy together. The family is also a legacy. So the brothers and the sisters and the cousins and the uncles, How can we all make an impact as a family? This should not just be me by myself trying to build family legacy. This Mm -hmm. is something that should be birthed on the back of the generational family concept. Mm -hmm. And we've lost that, I believe. A lot of us didn't know how to create it, especially in the African-American community. We really didn't understand that. And so a lot of these concepts are new to us. And you have to be okay with having uncomfortable conversations about deaths, wills, making sure your parents' affairs are in order so you're not in probate court. I mean, we we go really deep into this, yeah. like my jam. So it's, it's going to be really important that you just start to educate and start to read up and start to have the conversations about what you want that to look like. And it's the way that we talk about it and I think communicate with our children as well. Because if we're talking about, oh, mom has to, or dad has to go to work. Oh, we got to, I'm sorry, I can't be with you. Instead of approaching it that way, if we approach it as this is what mom is building, this is what dad is building for legacy, for you, for this amazing future and life that you're going to have and we're going to have as a family, then the children are more empowered and inspired by that attitude and they'll look up to you and then as a result, I would think that they would respect you and your time for that better. Don't you think? Ab- absolutely. <laughs> you know, when I really decided that I was, when my, my kids got a little bit older, I would say in the last two years, I was like, okay, it's time for me to go into another gear with this. I probably had about yeah. four to five hours of actual working hours during the daytime. 
And the rest of that is like breakfast, lunch, pick them up, drop them off. And then you're like, wait, I'm supposed to be creating my life too. And so it's, it's going to be really important that you, you look at having that conversation with your kids, right? When I wanted to go to the next level, I did sit my kids down. And at one point I really didn't talk to anyone. I, I, I told people I was going to call them in three months and I set aside a day on Fridays from three to 6 PM. And I call that family and friends time. And I wouldn't have any casual conversations with anyone outside of those hours. And if someone wanted to talk to me and they sent me a text, I would say, what is this pertaining to? And if it wasn't about business and putting money in my bank account, then they got kicked over to Friday (laughs) between three and six. (laughs) You know, and I was okay with that because none of the people that wanted to communicate with me had done anything to help me advance my life. When you're creating something that is beyond the scope of where you ever have taken yourself, right? It's like an out of body experience. Your life cannot look the same. You're not going to get a different result if every day you wake up, you're doing the exact same thing. That is lunacy if you Mm -hmm. believe that that's going to occur. Now, you can get into the mode where as you start to create and you start to generate momentum, you can get in manifestation mode. So now a lot of what I want is just drawn to me. But that's because there's something I sacrificed before I can get to the blessing. The blessing is not going to arrive at your doorstep without anything sacrificial happening prior. We are not designed that way. That's not how we manifest. And so when you get your kids in alignment with that, that conversation and you start talking to your kids in a more mature way and calling them forward to handle it, they will. They were mm-hmm. birthed through you for a reason. And you have to believe right. that, too. Well, I don't know if anyone else is feeling like they're getting the best motivational speech ever, but I'm, I'm full for the week. I'm just so full from hearing you talk. I might have to just call you like weekly and be like, okay, just leave me a voicemail to just lift, lift me up. Oh my gosh. You're just, you're such a light. Yeah. It's amazing. Before we wrap this up, I just want to super quick for the single women and single moms listening I want to touch back on this co-parenting relationship that you talk about because I think it's really important what you've come upon. Something that you say once again that's stunning is you believe in a split home, not a split family. And it is 100% accurate as to how their father and I manage our family. He is still the head of our family. He's not my husband, but he's the head of this family. Those are his children, period. That's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. And, there's and a lot of respect in that. And I respect him a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Just because we're not together doesn't mean that I don't respect him as a man. There are certain things I just cannot ever be to those boys because I'm a woman. I'm their mother. Mm-hmm. I'm not their father. And I get that some people don't have that opportunity to have the father be present. But if you do, and he is in a healthy space because sometimes that's also the situation. Give him the space to reign over the family. There is a reason that he is there. Allow him to be the foundation that you stand on because that's what he's built for. He's built for that task. Allow him to do it, right? And, and give him the praise. You know, men, men need that right? They, they need to feel acknowledged. They need to be respected. The woman is to be loved, not the man. The man wants respect. Mm-hmm. And so if you respect the man, your daughters will understand how to respect their husbands or, their, the, uh, or the other men in their life. We don't know if they're going to get married to a man. We don't know what's going to happen, at, you know, mm-hmm. but they'll know what it looks like to respect a man. For the boys, they'll know what it will look like to be a man that is respected, Right. I don't want my kids Mm -hmm. to get used to any toxic communication or women yelling at them or them not understanding what love really is. What does that look like? And I even ask my kids, um, I I check in with them probably about once a month and I say, how do you know mommy loves you? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, what does love look like? Because love is an action. Love is just not a word. It's just not a feeling. Right. 
People will tell you they love you, but they'll run you through the ringer. They'll ruin your entire existence, right? And so we need to let our children know what does love look like, not just to, for them to get a fuzzy feeling in their stomach because they hear someone say they love them, right? And so the p- most powerful way to love the parent that you're co-parenting with is to show them honor, is to actually let them have a say-so in their child's life and not to combat with them all the time. They see something that you don't. Their father sees things that I just don't. And guess what? I don't need to see them. There's things that I will never understand because I'm not a man. There are things that he feeds them that I just cannot because I'm not a man and I don't try to be. That's not what I aspire to do. Mm-hmm. I aspire to be the nurturer. I aspire to be the one that's there for them when they need me. And I inspire to be the one that shows them how to treat and love a woman, right? How to respect mm-hmm. a woman. When she says no, she means no, mm-hmm. right? And how to have boundaries and how to respect themselves when they're in a space with women, right? So you have to get really clear on how you are showing up in that co parenting relationship, Right? Are you bringing peace? Because you should still be, you know, they say uh, the the place that you want to go to should be the home. That's where Mm -hmm. the peace should be. Be the peace for your family. Even if you're not physically together, be the peace for your children. Be the peace for your ex or for the father of your children. And I think that beautifully also crosses over to women who aren't single moms, aren't dealing with a co-parenting, that they're in a marriage because we need, sometimes I think as women, we feel like we have to do it all and we take on all this pressure and we don't communicate what we need and what we want. Setting that time away for yourself and saying, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. Absolutely. I I get at least one phone call a month from a married friend <laughs> that says, you know, I don't, this is, I don't know what's going on here. I'm a big advocate for, for marriage and marriage staying together. And they're, I'm like, what's going on? They're just like, I want to work out. I want to go have fun, lunch with my friends. And I'm like, does he know that? And they're like, well, he should, he should, he of course should. he should know. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't he know that? I'm like, well, did you tell him? They're like, well, yeah, I mentioned I'm walking around the house. I'm talking about it. I'm like, well, did you schedule it and tell him? Well, Men don't get the clues. <laughs> they don't get the clues. You have to be direct. And you and, and if you say you're going to go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you're going to wake up at 5 a.m. and you'll be home by 7, can he do the breakfast? Can he get the kids prepped? Do it. So if you don't see the result... It's because you're not being direct and you're not scheduling it properly. And he doesn't actually know what's next. He doesn't know what to do. He wants to be there for you. Just give him that grace and that space and show him how. So beautiful. So beautiful. You have just given us a wealth, wealth of information. I am so amped up to go live my black and white life, no gray life, to just dive in fully to everything. You have just inspired and lifted me up as a mama in training. And, and you're, I, I just feel so full of all of this energy and, and focus and excitement that not only I am I going to take through when I do become a mom, but just right now, things that I can implement. And I think, of course, I wanted to highlight your experience and the amazing organization and things that you've created for single moms. But all of these lessons that you've discussed really cover the scope of every single female. And it's just been such a blessing. I'm, I'm really, really overwhelmed and grateful for your time. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, You know, very inspirational just speaking with you. And I love what you're doing. I think everyone should be listening to Mamas in Training. You know, it is um, something that we all need, especially as women and just trying to figure out how to how to parent, how to support other moms that maybe are going through certain situations or turmoils or even moms who are who are women who are not mamas yet, you know, how do you support them too? And how do you bring them into the fold and keep them close to you and then train them up so Mm -hmm. that when they go through, you know, relationships and 
Um, you know, even if they adopt or they do in vitro, um, or if their, their husband may pass away, they may be a widow mom. I mean, it's so, so layered. Um, I think that this show is just a blessing. Thank you so much. How can people find you? I am at single moms planet on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, also on LinkedIn. And our website for single moms planet is www.singlemomsplanet.org. And you can also find me personally at Nefertiri Plessy on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also on LinkedIn. And then my website is nefertiriplessy.com. Well, all of those links will be in the show notes as well in case people didn't get a chance to write those down. But Nefertiri, this has just been a delight. You're a ray of sunshine and I'm just so grateful. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode and leave a review on Apple Podcasts so I know how to better serve you. I'd also love for you to join our community of Mamas in Training on Facebook. You can find me at Mamas in Training on Instagram and at mamasintraining.com. For Mamas in Training, I'm Jessica Lorian. We're in this together. <laughs>